Welcome everyone and welcome Natasha Martinoshka to today's episode. Thank you so much, Joe. I so enjoyed to be here with you. It's Thank great you for the possibility. It's it's really great to have you. So everyone, meet Natasha. She is a life coach. And um yeah, basically I, I leave it to you to introduce yourself. Um you specialize in happiness and relationships, finding life work balance increasing self-worth and overcoming in a conflict and closing energy leaks, um, health and well-being and spiritual loss, um, generally speaking, and very much um, also relevant in the academic world. Um, for those who've listened to um, previous episodes of this show, um, you know that we often dig into well-being topics and how to maintain, regain um, mental well-being, physical well-being, or to use physical exercises to um to to preserve also mental well-being to be able to perform as academics in a highly demanding working environment that it is um so yeah we're keen to hear what you can share with us um on the topic and um please let's maybe start with um yeah what what's What's a short version of your journey? Why did you become a life coach? Um, and yeah, and do the work that you now do. Like, what is the story behind your profession? That's a great question, Joe. Thank you uh, for that. Originally, I am also coming from the academic world because um, um, high education was very important for my parents. And uh, I was always supported to educate myself and to study. Um, and uh, I finished economic university in uh, Macedonia, the country where I'm coming from in South East Europe. And then I continued and I got uh, my master in international business. And thanks to the, my study, I worked in a bank and I worked uh, for seven years in corporate job. I was married to my job. I was working 24 seven. Mm -hmm. um, and I was quite successful because I was one of the first a generation who was hired to build up a bank from scratch in Macedonia. Uh, and this bank came from uh, Germany, from Frankfurt. The name of the bank is ProCredit Bank and they had operations overall in, in 25 countries. Mm -hmm. um, and I was uh, very good in recognizing people in their qualities and seeing them in their needs. And that was the reason why I was promoted in my career. And I uh, got um, higher functions every two years. Um, so my last function was regional manager for South Macedonia. And I had like six uh, branches and about 100 people in my region. Um, I have always been uh, people oriented. I love also the... I love also to work according to the rules, but somehow sometimes the rules have to serve the the clients and the people. And the more I advanced in the hierarchy in the bank, I have uh, experienced that uh, the profit for the shareholder was more important than the well-being of people and that people were like instruments to achieve that. And mm -hmm. I have... Uh, always the idea when people are seen and understood in the strongest quality, then uh, an organization is becoming like a magnet to clients. And um, and that is a win-win combination. So in the bank, I felt that this, um, I felt always that that is a um, step to the real purpose of destiny, which I have in my life, but this was not my end station. Mm. And uh, my answer to my real purpose and mission came when I met my husband, uh, who was already experienced senior coach and business consultant and psychologist with many years of experience. And by deciding to choose for my love for him and coming with him to live in the Netherlands, I found my purpose because in the coaching sessions, I saw how people really um, um, 
get empowered to spread their wings and step up for who they are and what they believe in. Uh, because um, you see, I was educated in fear in the bank and there are people who were keeping themselves small and they didn't dare to show up in their self-expression because of fear to be punished or not to be um, taken serious. Perhaps that was, that was something um, like typical for my culture where I'm coming from because Macedonia has uh, years of history of being uh, enslaved by other countries. Perhaps it's, that is still the mentality of people, but I noticed that um, by leading by fear, um, we are not uh, achieving our purpose. And if we really want to manifest our talents and develop our qualities, that we need to really to be feel, to feel free in ourselves. And from to be feel to feel free in our self-expression and also to create in our life, because we people are um, very rich uh, with many qualities and different talents which like to be developed in us. And a life is more than just having a job, because that is career is one need which we, which we have. But next to that, we have also need to get rest on time to enjoy happy relationships, to put um, uh, our health a priority. Because even in the bank, I felt uh, if I go on like this, with this lifestyle, because I was not eating well and I was not uh, taking care uh, well of myself, um, I thought I will earn money because I had a lot of, I had a high salary and a lot of status. Um, and great network, but I was not taking care of, well of myself. And I, I noticed that if I go on with this kind of tempo in my life, sooner or later I will get sick. And that is not what I wanted. And that's uh, why I also realized life is just more than having a career because I was a real career woman. <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah. Also in academia, I think, well, at least in Germany, I don't think not so I don't think so much in Sweden where I did two years of my undergraduate studies. Um, there was also a game changer to see that another academic um, reality and professional uh, lifestyle is possible. Like Sweden is, I think, very family friendly in many sectors and also academia. But in Germany, it's very competitive. I think also in the banking system from what I heard. Um, and in academia as well, and you're expected to make a decision between um, building a family or building a career as a researcher. So yeah. there's yeah. Like, there's not much encouragement to to have a family. There's of course a few who try and they struggle often, also to find um, a place to work in, like a city or a country, because there's only short term contracts usually for one or two or three years. Um, and then the whole family needs to move. So it's not very family fr friendly as a, yes. as a profession. Yes. Um, yes, sorry. Many of my managers came from Germany because the bank was originally uh, from German origin. Mm -hmm. And they were like very high successful women, but who spent 12 hours per day in their job. And they hardly had relationships or families. And mm -hmm. yes, and that was for me like, um, strange because I'm educated in a country where family plays an important role in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I noticed that um, career and uh, hard working, yeah, was a high priority for these people. But um, if we only spent um, developing only one aspect of our life, on the longer time we will dry out in other aspects. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's only like every like I keep I like it took a few years before I internalized this concept of everybody has the same amount of time. Each of us is twenty four hours. So this also kind of re like recently I've also developed a rejection against this. And when I hear somebody says I have I don't have time for something, I was like, come on, we all have an equal amount of time or none, if you wish, but you make time for something that you think is important. <laughs> and that's also, yeah, but then if you if you live and find yourself in a working environment that does not provide space to make time for building a family or 
to breathe and and recreate like for recreational activities during the workday like we become robots and that's when we start developing mental health issues and in some cases disorders and that's in some cases then even like threatening but yes. um Yes, I'm so happy that you went through that stage. Yes, that you find out that there is also a high purpose. Uh, yeah, I'm happy for you. So then, um, so how do you f define work-life balance? What uh, what is a as a good example for a healthy balance between work and life? Work and yeah. what, whatever yes. life is, I consider also work as part of life. If we think about work as purposeful. And fulfilling us so like i i i've always found it strange of seeing the two separate from each other because we're still the same human being and we might get calls from our spouse or the kid like oh so so the two always i don't think it's possible to fully separate the two from each other as a human being but of course you need to set boundaries and i think that's what the whole concept is about but please tell us what you are yes, yes. That, that is a very personal choice, you see? It's a very personal, individual choice, uh, what uh, people experience, what is balanced for them. So mm -hmm. I can speak in general what is my idea about that, but please, for the ones who are for the ones who are listening, they really have to find out what is the best for them. Mm -hmm. um, especially, I find that as a woman, it's a very difficult to raise a family and also to have a high... Um, career development um, and um, happily for example in the Netherlands when I came to live here for me it was new that we mean work for two or three weeks uh, three days in a week because <laughs> for me it was always normal to work five days a week uh, so um, I um, find that um, is the same time that for a woman is also important to have a career and not only to be a mother because I see that women who are, on, who are only mothers they get the uh, uh, worthiness or acknowledgement in life only from being a mother and then they put high expectations on children later on um, for um, yeah for being high achievers in order to compensate in order to feel that they are um, good mothers and that is also not a good idea to only become a mother without having a career. Um, so I think that um, putting our talents in service of others is giving us energy. And it is important to define um, for every person. Um, I think it is important every person to define what is their talents, what are their, what are their strongest qualities, and how they can put this in service of others and in which kind of profession they can also earn with this. Um, and finding the right um, balance, so between service and um, paying attention to relationship and family um, is very important for mental health. And I think that the the choice it doesn't have to be 50 50 it can be 70 30 it can be 30 70 it it has to do with the quality and not with the quantity mm. um, but both both um, uh, aspects have to be well managed yeah okay so here when you say well managed so you're calling is this also how you work with your clients to work on the time management in both areas it's not about time management it's only it's also about they have to feel what's right for them of course they have to put priorities uh, in what is most important for them and of course um, um, they have to manage their time well uh, at the same time they have to manage their energy well and that is uh, what is more important so how much energy they spend in their work and how much energy they spend at home mm -hmm. and most of the time when we are doing things we love that is giving us energy it's not costing us energy mm -hmm. so um I learn people to do activities and engage in things which are really satisfying and which are which are increasing the energy levels so so one aspect, if I understand you right, you help them see the or find the purpose in the work that they do so that they don't yes. see it as an energy drain and instead... Yes, exactly. Okay, beautiful. And then 
like regarding i mentioned time management because i've from what i heard i'm well i can relate i don't have children on my own but i have dogs and dogs yeah. my children don't like to be left behind and alone to themselves or mm. care of somebody else but the owner so i don't know like any any parents out there please excuse the comparison but what i heard also from parents is they always feel guilty when they work to not being able to spend enough time whatever yeah. enough means with their children yes and do you see in your clients like if they see a purpose in the work that they do that um not draining the energy at the workplace helps to ease that pressure also for because i mean one thing is also to find an employer who is more flexible with time so that um so that we can work for instead of five days a week or we can have like instead of eight hours just six hours a week or and then maybe do a little bit of home office work where we can still find time to prepare dinner or lunches for the kids um so in that sense like from yet, yet again from the time aspect like what what's a good strategy you would suggest um, most I uh, have lately many clients who are also self-employed moms, and they can divide uh, their time in the way they like, and that is what I'm meeting mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not a privilege for everybody, um, but um, children need to know that moms are available. For example, uh, and the parents are available, but they don't have to be all the time around them. Mm. Uh, as long as they feel that avail availability and um and attention or uh, the moments they need and children um understand also uh when parents have to work because i educate um families or parents or uh, that everybody is uh, contributing to the well-being of the family for example uh the parents are bringing are working and they're bringing the money in the family for example, the father is bringing the money in the family. Uh, the mother is also working and taking care of the household. Or they have divided uh, tasks. And in this way, they contribute uh, for the well-being of the family. And children contribute also to the well-being of the family by giving their best uh, at school and uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing also their work. So they can all like work together in unity and that they also uh, can... Um, uh, be, that they, they also can be involved in the decisions which are made in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I had once a situation for a mother who wanted to work from three hours, three a day in the week uh, to four days in the week. And then the whole family had to consult about this uh, possibility mm -hmm. because that would mean that uh, the rest of the family have to uh, take over some of the responsibilities of the mother and by consultation uh, when they bring decision as uh, unity and when all stay behind the decision then um, the mom can work without feeling guilty mm, yeah um that makes a lot of sense yes mm -hmm. because the family is one unity and uh uh, the, yeah, everybody has to be involved in decisions who are in, which are influence, influencing the whole family. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, to to yeah, there's basically also a management approach to include everyone who's a stakeholder from project yes. management speech or talk. Um, to to let them be part of the decision making and weighing in their arguments for oh this can work for me or not because A B C and then there might be compromises to be made and yes and people can evaluate the decisions and feel what if it is harmony or not yeah and I feel the same is important for the family to have a say in whatever affects them as well as also the employer and the team in the business setting because there if if there is a decision to for a mother who's in a team or also the team leader to decide to work more from home and also fewer hours then that workload needs to be compensated by the others in some way yes. and then, yeah i'm just pointing out the opportunity for a collective decision making instead of one making a decision and informing the others but to yes. 
to yeah to an, an yeah encourage all of us to consider okay who has a stake in this who is affected by whatever decision I'm about to make and how can I make them feel respected for their needs and how it make affect them and allow them to have a say and, and to be prepared for what's going to come their way yes oh. nice yeah that makes very much sense hmm okay um happiness is a theme in your um consulting and coaching approach what does happiness mean to you and how do you work around happiness with your clients you see i've noticed that happiness we have to happiness come from comes from progress from action and it comes from overwinning ourselves and growing uh in uh ourselves in uh, on a higher level on a higher dimension and that gives also fulfillment so happiness is not something to come to us like like from nothing we have to work for it <laughs> um and we have to deserve it and um and oftentimes we are faced with different challenges because life wants that we grow and that we learn and we, when that we develop you see life is never standing still like everything in nature is growing and dying and die, or dying also mm -hmm. we people develop and grow to the next level or we um stagnate but every stagnation is actually um going backwards so uh, by um uh, by um solving the challenges in a positive way and overcoming ourselves in difficulties we um we feel happiness and that can be in our work that can be in our relationships that can be in relationship with our uh, friends uh so um the overcoming of of challenges and the progress we're booking that is what really makes us happy and we have to be come equipped in that <laughs> Mm. We have to be, become equipped in that in how to see um, problems as challenges and to understand that life is happening um, for us to learn in each and every situation. And um, sometimes people um, experience problems as being painful and they get um, stuck in that kind of things and when they don't pick up the lesson and they don't learn how to deal with the situations that is causing problems when people don't accept reality and they go to protest or they go to um, resist or when they uh, go, go to reject or deny what is going on in their life that is causing suffering mm. uh, because when we cannot accept how life is presenting to us and we have a uh, conflict with what is happening, we 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 suffer, um, and I teach people to know how to deal with conflicts, to recognize what is the lesson behind, and to implement that in their life so that they can grow in that aspect. And um, yeah, that is giving happiness. <laughs> mm, yeah, I I can relate to that. So what I hear from you is that happiness is closely tied to satisfaction for our, about our own achievements mm -hmm. in life so that's one thing also being able to resolve conflicts when they arise and not get trapped in them yes so letting go of the armor like self-defensiveness but instead seeing opportunities for peace building <laughs> in the relationship Yes, and it is not that um, in relationships, for example, because I give sometimes relationship advices to people, in relationship, it is also, it's not our partner's responsibility to make us happy, it is our own responsibility to make us happy, and we, it is not our responsibility to make our partner happy, it is his or her responsibility to make himself happy, mm -hmm. so that we can connect from a place of giving, of giving um, in relationship, and not to come uh, in relationship because of uh, having the need of to take something yeah so two and people have to be already fulfilled yeah so they come, when they come together they will have synergy and they like to share that happiness and that is uh um a, a good basic for a, a relationship so yeah 
the, the, the principle has to be giving and not taking and not wanting that the other people, the other person have to make us whole. So that it will not work because the other person cannot make us whole. We have to make ourselves whole. Yeah. So I, I shared with you earlier that in every conversation for this podcast, I have this moment of, oh my God, yeah, no, I see something new. Um, so what you emphasize here is self-worth and self-respect mm -hmm. before we engage with others or um and then what i wanted to share also is okay well, let me start somewhere else so what if a couple gets together um quite early in their lives where they might come with needs to be fulfilled or that where they expect oh i need somebody else's shoulder to lean on i need somebody else's power power and strength to make it in this life um or through difficulties that i otherwise wouldn't be able to cope with on my own so i feel like many relationships mm -hmm. out there are very much on a needs-based approach that people get together but then can grow into something where both people complement each other and i think this is what i've been longing for, for or maybe also found in some of the relationships but it's for another episode mm -hmm. or somewhere else to discuss mm -hmm. deeper but um do you believe that um like a needs-based relationship can also change into a mutually supportive type of relationship it's basically couples yes. consulting or coaching i think i don't know where yes you, yes you see uh we are not educated about relationships we don't I learned it at school, we don't learn it at home, and oftentimes we don't have also the right role models. And when we get young into relationship, people um, connect based on emotions uh, or instincts, but they're not like connecting from a higher consciousness, and they don't know yes, uh, yet themse uh, themselves yet. So um, we have right to feel emotions and to share this with our partners, and we have the right to be supported and to be confirmed in 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 um in the good things that we are doing and also to be understood in the in the painful experiences so of course we can share these things and of course we like to be supported by the partner but the partner can support us by listening and being being there for us and understanding uh, and sometimes can also give tips but the responsibility for coming out of that situation is not um our it's not from our partner you see uh problems in relationship comes when we think that the other person has to make us happy the other person has to is responsible to save us or to 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 achieve our goals for us that is not going to happen so then a conflict is happening so um um in order to have a happy relationship you have to have a two two strong individuals who uh, know themselves in their character and who respect each other, but also they have uh, clear borders mm -hmm. and which may not be crossed. Uh, and of course, we can share things, but we may not expect that the other one will solve things for us. Mm -hmm. And we can have the emotional support, but the responsibility for, for solving things, it is within the individual yeah but we can maybe ask for support without expecting that it will be met right um we can always ask for support mm. but we must not make the other one responsible for mm. uh, for oh. situation yeah so here comes a whole other concept personal responsibility yes mm. i only yes. learned about this recently. yes, yes. In, in psychology uh, for example, my husband is a psychologist and he's always telling uh, the one who experienced pain has a problem to solve. <laughs> so it is within the, it is uh, the responsibility is within the individual. Yeah. Sometimes... And we may not blame, we may not blame the other one for not achieving mm -hmm. our own mission or goals or for giving up our dreams. That must not happen. Yeah. Because, I feel like... uh -huh. yeah, because when, if we lose ourselves, and if you lose our connection with our true purpose and our true mission and our true essence, we will lose it, the relationship because uh, I've seen that happening many times. And then because many problems are coming out of that. Yeah. 
I, like if we expect others to fix our problems, yes, don't take ownership of our responsibility. Yes. Um, and yet sometimes we are weak. Sometimes we need help. We need support. But is it then on the others only to provide the space and give a little bit of comfort and assistance? But we still need to do the work ourselves, right? Yes, we may also expect understanding. You see, but because we, when we share the pain and we speak of the pain, we get free from it. We, it's not any more suppressed or uh, mm -hmm. it, it's not more in our system. By speaking it out, uh, we can get free from it. It is very uh, beautiful experience. And mm -hmm. when we share it, we can also, when we feel understanding and when we, when we feel understood, then we can also... Um, that is a healing experience. Yeah, and there's already a power gain again, a strength gain. So that's one of yes. the Yes. Yes. Emotions have to be shared. And by um, feeling them and uh, speaking them and releasing them, uh, yeah, we um, oh. we come out of that uh of, of, of really the pain which is which is uh, how to say this the energy which is coming free from that it is connecting to the positive qualities in us and when and then we can connect with ourselves in a good way again so yeah it's a healing experience mm. um yeah so all of this so again hello listeners um if you're wondering how this has like what what's the relation to academia and uh, research workplace there's a lot well Again, if you've listened to other podcasts before, um, the academic workplace is quite a demanding one. And whatever personal issues we might have also affect our um, performance at work and vice versa. Um, yes. We're just one human being carrying all the load. Yes. And the pressure that we experience at work will also kind of spill into our personal life. Yes. So this is not, maybe now where we can maybe spend a few sentences on how can we protect our personal life from the pressure that we experience at work? Do, can, do, you, do you have strategies? And maybe it goes back to what we already talked about just from a different viewpoint. How can we take personal responsibility? Be, maybe starting with realizing we are under pressure when we feel stressed. And then when we go home, our spouse or our parents or whoever is there is not their fault that we experience pressure and, and harm at work. So how can we be strong enough and take responsibility not to let it spill over into our private lives? Yes, that needs uh, some um, work. I mean that asks uh, uh, some increasing of of consciousness you see i teach my clients for example um to really ask themselves of or uh, of they are doing things because they really must or they really want to because when we do things from must and wanting to prove ourselves that is so exhausting and so tiring because we are busy to prove that we are good we are busy to prove that we can achieve those results we are busy every time to prove to ourselves that we are good enough and that need to prove is a <laughs> is a huge energy leak um because uh, to, to prove yourself means to reject yourself because you have to every time um to confirm that that you are doing good enough and i teach my clients to switch from uh, doing things from must to really ask themselves do i want this because when you do the things from really from your free will that is giving energy but when you do the things from must that is costing energy so um that is one thing Another thing is that I uh, teach people also when they are busy with certain activities to think about the values which are um, connected to them. Uh, for example, when, uh, for example, in basic things, for example, when they, when, uh, when somebody is cooking is busy with the value health. 
when somebody is uh, working, is busy with the value um, to serve, or when you're busy with research, uh, then you are busy to to serve a higher purpose and to contribute to to um, yeah certain organization or certain cause or certain um, uh, um, research, so that you can um, get results which are of added value to 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 you and also to others so if you um, are busy to do your work from really wanting to serve and contribute to a higher purpose that is giving energy it is not exhausting so i teach i teach people to really connect to their why to their true mission and also to do the things from their own free will and not from top down being pressured because mm. otherwise we will lose our face and or we will lose the investment from the investors who are uh, uh, um, paying that. So that is an in the, indeed a high pressure energy. So I, I, I teach people to find a different approach to it that and different attitude and also to stand up for what they really feel, mean and experience and to uh, show up for that. Um, mm -hmm. so the, yeah, perhaps it's again, uh, going to personal responsibility thing, but it is really about if the people need more time or space or, um, resources, they have to communicate that in a good way and on time, you see? Yeah. Thanks Communication is also another important thing, how you communicate. Yeah. In all directions, right? At home, like what's your tone? <laughs> um, yes. But also, do you really need to share everything that's happening in work at home with the people there? Um, because they can often not relate to the conflict. Um, yes, yes, because yes, because people who are researchers they do they study so hard, they work so hard, they really um uh, workaholics. <laughs> mm. Yes, and um, and that is can be also very rewarding, but it may not uh, be. Um, it's not very satisfying in the long run. It, yes, in order to be satisfied, yes, it it, uh, it may not. Uh, that doesn't mean that other uh, areas of life have to be uh, neglected. And I've also find out find out that mm. the not the knowledge or the uh, the results um, have to be of added value to you to you to the surrounding to the organization to uh, other stakeholders um yeah in order to really um add value uh mm. to to others yeah so i think that researchers are very talented people and very loyal and hard working and they really need to be not so hard on themselves mm. um what what does your what do your parents say about what you're doing now being hardcore academics themselves do, can they relate to the work that you do now or was there my parents a... they are still my father is still thinking that the banking career was the best of me because there <laughs> i was already a director and i should still be a director and if i stay <laughs> there i should have this high status and he's still thinking in that system and i don't blame him for that i understand him and yeah. listen to him uh when he's telling me that um and i understand that uh, i told i told him some time ago that he still feeling sorry for my banking career <laughs> <laughs> i think and, parents um, especially fathers for their daughters only want security because and security often comes with a lack of freedom and but yeah sometimes I'm, my dad was the same he was like oh make sure you have a good career you study to then make lots of money so you will never have to worry about it like well yes yes, yes. Worried for that, but thanks <laughs> yes so he teached me to search for safety outside of myself he teach me to search for um uh also to search my uh how to say this my truth out of myself in research in science in teachers in in professors i was always searching for my truth outside of myself by others because i was educated to study and i was a good student uh, so it took a long time in my life until I, I learned, I, 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 until I went to this personal development and learned more about how, how life works and until I really understood to find the truth within my heart, in myself and, mm. and from there to, to uh, manifest and to show up uh, my talents and 
from my, to act from my own free will and not because it's expected from me. And my switch to entrepreneurship was uh, <laughs> a big uh, surprise for my parents. So yeah, they had really to 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 get um, used to it. And your mom, what did she say? She's more supportive now. She's more supportive and she's believing in me, in me and she's seeing me still hard working sometimes. But when I work from my passion, I don't feel it as work because yeah. I feel uh, I, I should do this even if I'm not paid, <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. And that is the difference. So it is very different when you do something because you like it, because that is your passion, because it is your why, that is your mission. Why are you here on earth? Um, it's a di it's a different attitude than when you do something from expectations of others or asking recognition from others mm -hmm. or um, being even uh, dependent on approval from others. Um, mm -hmm. And that was uh, my education. Um, so I really had to break through that. What would you say to a researcher who says that, oh, I only took the academic career because my parents are both academics and they thought that's the only way to go. So I felt I need to do that to make them happy, to meet their expectations, but I'm actually not happy in academia. Yes, I, um, as long as the the self-esteem is not strong built in the person the person will search for safety outside within system or structures uh, from others to feel um, significant welcome and loved and also appreciated um, i advise people if they have voice in their heart which is telling that they are born for something more or different to really uh, investigate that because we are all born with unique talents and gifts and we um, um, develop them in different life stages. And it can be that when the other qualities in the person um, want to be developed, that people can change profession, they can change the place of living, they can change relationship. So I, I see people spending their whole life chasing some symbols because they were educated like that but they are not accept they are not uh, aligned to their true purpose or mission so all of this if there are people in the audience who recognize themselves in this i would advise them to really uh, start the personal development journey and um find a good mentor or coach who can uh, see them in their talents, in their true mission and purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that they can really find that out for themselves and make a, perhaps another choice if that feels well for them. Because we can spend a whole life um, trying to be something for somebody. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and at the end we will regret it and that is not a well-spent life yeah i want to also um give a more concrete example because a phd usually takes anything between three to five sometimes more years and i think almost everyone at some point in this time span thinks oh i can't bear anymore i need to quit but then there's such a stigma around quitting the PhD to get that title, which is has such a high value in society. Um, and then to have come so far and then give up is what the feeling often is. Whereas I also had that like a year before I was scheduled to graduate. Basically, I was expected to. And then I, I think most scholars, most PhD students feel I don't have enough results, I don't deserve this, um, I'm not good enough, um, I, didn't, I didn't publish all those papers I was expected to, um, so what's the point? But then also I've already invested so much, so I'm already giving the answer myself because of my own experience and I'm just asking for your opinion or your kind of add-on to that. I feel 
like I made a decision to eventually pull through, even though I felt really weak. And to escape was was very tempting, but then the stigma was also like a Democles sword above me. I was like, oh, what if I really quit? What else can I do? I actually Googled, what can you do if you, after quitting your PhD? <laughs> and there's so many things, but Google wouldn't tell you because nobody puts it online that I actually quit my PhD. And many people do. Or the other way to put it, they never finish. So they just take on another project. And just to put it out there, there's no shame in quitting your PhD because you can always put in your CV as I was a research assistant. I worked on that project. I had these and these accomplishments. I used these and these methods. So you can always frame it in a positive way because you actually gained experiences and expertise, even if you don't have the diploma on the end of the day or the, the certificate. But I, at some point I figured, okay, I've come this far, I've already invested four years. Let me pull through. And eventually I did. I didn't get the best grade, but I, I got the diploma or the, the PhD certificate. And I can't say that it made me proud because I know the sweat and tears that went into it. But I don't know, like knowing now, even with the certificate in my hands or in my filing system. I know that I would be just as worthy without it. And yet I'm glad I pulled through because I proved to myself that I could still do it even in my weakest moments. And also opening up to others helped me to put my position into perspective because everybody at some point has these thoughts mm -hmm. and everybody thinks like every PhD student um, there's so much pressure and I'm probably not good enough. So it's important to share these fears with others to learn, oh, I'm actually not the only one and not necessarily to compare, but to put into balance that actually what you have achieved is good enough and will be enough to, to get the title if you really want it, want it. But if you don't, if it doesn't matter for your career path, then you don't have to finish. You don't have to put yourself into this pain yes yes i totally agree with you joe that's very wise i totally agree because i've learned we connect our worthiness to diplomas status salary functions mm. as symbols outside of ourselves and then uh um when those symbols fall apart or are not there anymore in life, we feel that we are nobody. I had once a director who lost his job and he had a, fire, a very high function. And he told me, I'm nobody now. You see, because he connected his full identity with that job, with that function. And as researchers, they connect the identity with their diploma. And when they have the diploma, then they are worthy of love or uh, they have a right to exist. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, and it is very painful when we connect our self-esteem, our worthiness with things out of ourselves. Um, and I teach people to connect their identity with, their, with who they are mm -hmm. and not with what they do. Mm -hmm. Because we connect our worthiness with what we do, wow. with our job not with who we are as a person and as a person we are born with uh, 361 qualities 361 emotions we have a, a mind we have heart mm. we have morality uh, we are much more than one diploma and uh, we are born from love we are born to give our talents from our free will mm in service of others and there are many ways to serve because service always give happiness huh? so i thought i was talking about happiness happiness comes from service for being uh, of added value to others and there is always uh for us possible to find a way to serve mm. it doesn't have to be through the diploma it can be also by finding uh, other ways um, so researchers please be very compassionate uh, lovable to yourself and uh, um, and tr please try not to feel guilty because that is only uh, increasing the pain so you, you really have to be very compassionate with yourself because they are very mm -hmm. you're very hard working people yeah. 
and uh, I believe that light is guiding us and for every researcher it has to find what is truth for, for them mm. yeah thank you for for the call to action really to change our mindsets as researchers I I have this app on my phone it's called I am I don't know if you also know it it works on any device and you can download it from whichever store and it's for self-affirmation or it affirms as in, like it reminds us of and what you just said like feeling guilty is just a thought and like i just read earlier today thoughts can be changed often with yeah. the help of others but if we you know if you just don't know the app like the app will tell you you can change this thought of feeling guilty feeling undeserving like just it's it's just in your head and you have proof like we all have proof that it's not true so let's yes. look on the on the other things that are actually yes yes i tell people sometimes a mantra to say i have work i'm not my work i'm more than my work i'm not only my work <laughs> mm. oh yeah thank you, you yes right i on. have work i'm not my work i am more than my work <laughs> thank you okay i think that's a perfect closing statement and like a perfect take-home message for everyone from this episode, including myself. Thank you so much, Natasha. You're very welcome, Joy. I loved it. Um, thank you for this uh, opportunity and for the depth of our discussion. Uh, I'm wishing you lots of success with all of other uh, projects. And uh, I hope that people um, will benefit from this discussion. Mm, yeah, for sure. We put also all your details in the show notes and the affiliated blog posts, as always. So if any of you would like to hear more from Natasha, you can follow her on social media. She has a very informative bilingual and maybe sometimes also trilingual um, or soon to come. I'm just putting this out there. Um, LinkedIn messaging. So a lot of wisdom being shared free of charge. And you can also consult with her for any one-on-one -on -one coachings if, if need be. Like let's let's not suffer in silence but reach out for assistance to do the personal what was the personal responsibility work and to step into our purpose yes that's the way joe thank you so much and uh if i could support you in any way please let me know yes we'll get back here like i'll, I'll reach out for sure <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you all the best mm -hmm.